thanks very much for keeping in touch throughout the week. Um, I'm in my studio today, as I said, and what I'm going to be doing today is showing the principles of how I approach an interior design project. A lot of people say, oh, tell us the secret of interior design. There's not really any secret. There's just a system that I use and I would, li I would like to share with you. But it's, it's not where you start, it's where you finish. You could be inspired by a bedroom you've stayed in in a hotel. You could be inspired by someone else's home, a magazine article, a wall covering, a table lamp. But the first germ that I start with, or the first aspect, is the things that I see most in the room. So that would be wallpaper or fabric at your windows. So those are two of the largest areas. And then we work out the function of the room. Um, and today's project I'm going to discuss with you. Um, this is a client of mine that I'm, funnily enough, virtually working with just now because she is in... Um, the Arab Emirates at the moment and moving back to Glasgow. So I have started to create some mood boards to get the ball rolling. It's taken a little bit longer because of waiting and samples coming in from post. I'm not in the studio every day, but my samples have arrived and this is, I haven't been to see the property yet and I want to go to do my own measures uh, and then take a decorator and in another day um, to measure up and get all the sizes taken. But this is a a starting point of conversation and this client um, had sent me some which is always essential I mentioned last week about creating a mood board or a dream board or a vision board with samples and pictures she sent me um, like Pinterest images of the types of atmosphere she liked um, it's a, a lovely one bedroom um, apartment and she wanted something that was um, had a, li a little bit of glitz to it, without it being too Glasgow glitz. Um, wanted something that was light and airy, and I've come up with this, so I'll take you through it. First and foremost, I'll show you a quick plan that I drew up, um, just so that I can, when I go to a site, I can make the measurements. Just move my coffee over, and I'll pop my microphone on. And here we go, so I'll tilt the camera down and have a look to begin with at the plan. Just tell me if you can see that, okay? There we go. So this is the plan of the apartment itself and there's an entrance hallway here. It has a storage area. It's got a lovely bath and shower room into a good sized bedroom into open plan kitchen, living, and if I can, small dining area. So I created this because I can then start to scale up to see the pieces of furniture. So this is all you see at a scale of one to 50. And it means that when I'm drawing things up, I can make sure that A, they fit, and B, they can get in through doorways, and everything's catered for. So I've looked into the co console table here for the hallway, Probably a table and chair set, if I can, for the kitchen. A bed, sofa, chairs, coffee table, rug, floor lamps, TV unit with storage underneath. And there's going to be some occasional tables dotted about the place. And into the bedroom, client wanted a dressing table and chair, two bedside cabinets and a king size bed. So the plan being done, I'm going to show you how I started looking at the boards. So I'll start with the living room. Okay. There we go. So, as I mentioned, sometimes um, you inherit something. So the flooring's already in place. And in this place, sorry, I've got my cable out of the way. That's it. And in this case, I've inherited, it's like a, it's actually a warmer coloured oak floor, which was a little bit of a problem because client wanted something a little bit cooler with some silver tones and dressed with light and white and quite reflective. But that being the case, I still worked away at it and I thought I'd start with the wallpaper. So I wanted to choose something like this. Now this is just for a feature wall. 
and it's going to help bring in the warmth of the floor but start to introduce some of the tones that the client's looking for in silvers and greys. So I will put a rug down to hide a lot of the floor but I thought that was a good starting point for the wall covering which basically is going to, as you walk into the room, is going to be the wall that faces you. And then I wanted to do a wall-to-wall -wall voil in this silver effect here. So there's a slight geometric pattern going on, but it's not too bold and in your face, and it's quite soft and works really, really well. I then start to look at bringing in some pieces of furniture. Now, the walls would probably just be in another, maybe a chalky white or a chalky grey, so that this is just the feature wall. And then we'll start looking at furniture. Now, comfort is key, and also this has to be a sofa bed. A cable. Oh, that's okay for sound. Um, this so it has to be a sofa bed because if she wants to have guests coming to stay. So I wanted something that was usable and comfy and I could layer up with nice white and grey mohair throws for a lovely level of plushness. Now this is a great sofa and I love these little black legs and you'll see if you make everything too bland If you make everything too bland, it just becomes boring. So what you need to do is have a contrast. In this case, I'm using like a black finish or an iron to give the, the, the whole design a little bit of weight. So you'll see that on the plan that I created, it has the sofa, but I thought two occasional chairs with these arms on them. Again, you can soften that with a little sheepskin rug, but again, it's bringing in that kind of geometric open feeling into the apartment and then on the other wall opposite the sofa a large display cabinet which is great for storage under the TV and it brings in the grey and the black so you see how it's all beginning to come together because we've got the soft greys and the chalky whites with the little pieces of black just to weight everything down so then I wanted to look at a rug so this could be in greys or espresso cappuccino colours to bring him out the floor. And I know it's quite small, but that was the design. Again, the soft geometric that would be underfoot, which would be under the sofa, the two chairs and the coffee table could sit on. And you'll see that's beginning to blend and bring the floor in as well. Looking at uh, lighting, which is really important, um, I do have to double check if it's just spotlights or there's a central ceiling fitting. But if there's a central ceiling fitting, what I wanted to do was use this. Now this is from Cottrell & Co. And it's called the Huckleberry Light. And it's got all these little cables on it. Now if that's too fussy, I can take that back. This is why it's, it's good that if I create a mood board to discuss with the client, and if she thought that was just too much, I can go for a more simplistic look. It could even just be a really nice big um, fabric covered drum in the middle of the room. But I thought that added, I like these little pieces of fabric. So if there is a ceiling fitting, I'd probably adopt something like that. Side lighting. And on the plan, I wanted to put two floor lamps, and these are very in vogue. And this is a sort of greyish, brownish washed wood. And then I would customise the shades to match the, the, the curtains. So it's got a lovely coordinated look. And then looking at occasional furniture, bringing in a geometric shape again so this would sit this is a glass top because i don't want to busy the center of the room up too much and i thought something like this with the geometric would work for the coffee table and that's the same uh, principle i would use for the table and chair set in the kitchen it'd be a glass top with maybe a chrome base um and just quite small stools. If I can fit them in, I'd love to, because I think it brings another dimension into the room. Side tables, bringing the dark in again, because it's all about the darks and the lights, and all of the accessories in this room would be whites and then pops of color, 
but these little black iron drums again hinting in that geometric feel artwork and cushions now as you look at that you're probably thinking yeah it's all looking quite soft um, and not that dramatic but if I start to show you if I bought some accessories in these colors or it could be rusts or it could be oranges or blues those on the sofa just add that pop of color which you can seasonally change more cushions and if you're being really if you wanted to keep it quite monochromatic this is another range of cushions as well so the elements here that make this work and possibly some art or I would bring some colorful art in as well the elements here I would say all pulled together and it does have what the client was hopefully looking for was a kind of elegant sophisticated with a little bit of glitz and shimmer through it comfortable open plan living that I thought and hopefully that this is a good direction to start the conversation rolling as I say I've still got to measure up I've still got to cost everything up but it's great to get a talking point with a client especially because we do don't see each other face to face and I'll be working with her son to create the look for her coming home so that is the living area and the kitchen area and the entrance part I thought as you come in to the hallway I'm looking at now again it's the same wooden floor but this paper this wallpaper and I was actually going to run it horizontally to make the room, room feel larger and it's like a vinyl but it's got silver through it so again it's giving the client that little bit of shimmer and glamour without it being too in your face and then there's not much more space in there I might put a runner down uh, the hallway but I'll have to measure for that but I thought the putting the contrast in is a little bit of a hint as to what's happening in, to, in the living room lovely console table super big mirror which again is going to increase the feeling of width and then just one nice lamp very very simple but very effective and it actually hints at everything that you're going to see when you get into the, the living room it's a little sneak preview as it were so what I'll do is I'll move those onto this here I will do a close-up of these later on for you folks in case I'm moving too fast because I can't read your questions at the moment okay so that's the first area let me see um, that's how I probably go about it. So whether it's a living room or a bedroom or a hallway, I'm always looking at the main features first. And in the hallway, there's no window, so it's not fabric. So it's the wallpaper on the wall. That's the thing that really makes the statement the minute you go into the room. And then going into the living room, again, it's a feature wall, then a wall of voile, which just would look really, really effective. So those are the two big things I start with, and then we build on the layers, and then we build on the layers, and then you add accessories, orchids, splashes of colour, beautiful bedding. Now, talking about bedding, I'm going to take you into the bedroom. And... I've started off with, now this has already been chosen, which is the carpet, which is a sort of so, a soft creamy taupe colour. So I'll tilt the camera down again. And you can see the carpet there. So what I wanted to do, because it is quite creamy, but I still wanted to get that almost cool white grey effect. I've gone for this wallpaper. And again, it's shot with a kind of crystal so it gives a lovely bit of reflection and it's it changes I mean it hard you can hardly see the pattern there you can see it there but again it's, it's almost chalk white and I thought that was perfect just to lift and build the tones of the carpet in 
and then thinking about the next big thing you see in the room, because it's really just a wall of fabric, is this really lovely royal, which actually looks as if it's got little diamonds on it, but it's just the way the stitch so has worked. It works really, really well. Now, I've actually got these at home, um, and they just work so well, and the client actually saw these on one of my um, streaming Sunday mornings, and so I decided to reuse that. And you'll see what that does is brings all of those tones together. This would just be a feature wall, or actually this could just this could be two walls because we've got wardrobes on one wall, windows on the other wall with this. So we'll wait and see, but a feature wall, but definitely the features of the room will be in this crystal paper. But now a voil's nice for bedtime. Uh, for daytime, but you do need to sleep at night. Now, I don't like a completely uh, blacked out room, but some people do. So, a nice roller blind in this silver grey truffle will mean that the light can be obscured at night time. So, that's all working super well. But then I wanted to bring in the greys, and I don't mind mixing bronze and copper and silver. I think it gives the room the meat on the bones without it being all too match. You know, just like you've opened up the inside of a catalogue and this is your grey scheme, that's your blue scheme. I like to ring the changes. So, the next big thing would be a headboard. I'm going to get her a really good um, Ottoman divan bed because you'll be able to lift the mattress up and then I'll make a headboard. And I thought, the client had already sent me this picture of a high headboard with slightly wings at the side. And I thought that, with that grey, would really just set the, the main focal point into the room. And when we're dressing the bed, you'll see the, all the white there. So again, like one of my the styling, I love the styling of the white company where it's just beautiful white hotel chic fabrics. So then we're looking at um, a bit of bling. Now, I'm sorry, this is a tiny picture. I don't know if you can see it. This is the chandelier. And it's little pieces of what's well, meant to be crystal, but I think it's actually plastic. But it's a bit like the same effect as the wallpaper in the living room. And it's a really bling crystal chandelier. Very feminine, very floaty very reflective. And then when we look at furniture, I like these little bedside cabinets and it's a matching dressing table. And it's got an almost soft chevron greyish putty color with bronze handles and bronze feet. So those would be the bedsides and the dressing table. And on the bedsides, two lovely lamps. Now, I've gone for white here because it's going to bring in the white of the bedding or it could be silver to bring in the other tones of the headboard, but just really nice, very modern bedside cabinets and it's a nice mixture, bedside um, lamps. It's a really nice mixture of finishes. Then a nice chair, simplistic, clean, simple lines to sit at the dressing table. And then if you look at that and you think it's all becoming a bit bland or it's going a little bit too greyish or taupey, you can bring a lot of whites in. But equally, you could go a little bit crazy and put really lovely, these are Christian Lacroix cushions on the bedding and that just adds a little pop of colour again. It could be very dramatic as well. But those are things that are easily changed and just accessories at the end. So that is the look for the bedroom. And then if I put the two boards together, I'm going to take the camera off the stand and lead you through the room. So I'm hoping you can see this in detail. So on this side here, that was the hall stripy wallpaper with a console table, mirror and lamp. 
Then coming into the living room, we've got the feature wallpaper, the bed sofa, feature chairs, ceiling light if we need it, TV storage unit, rug, coffee table and accessories. And going through into the bedroom, onto the carpet which I've inherited, we have the feature wallpaper, the shiny vinyl, the blackout blind, the furniture, bedside cabinets, dressing table, chair and, ta and oh, um, chair and lamp. Simple bedding, very effective and a soft suede headboard. And that is the ambience for the stunning little apartment. So I hope that made sense. I can stand. Um, and that is really how I go about creating a design concept. Um, everybody works in a different way. That's just the way that it works best for me. And it means I'll be able to send um, my client, hopefully she's watching, um, I'll be able to send her stills of these. And then be, once I've been to see the property, I'll be able to measure it all up. Um, and hopefully it's as we've got a starting point to discuss things anyway. The project's probably not going to be live. It is built and I'd say the carpets and the flooring's all done. So it's just a matter of me liaising um, with her family here to get the project complete. So if you have any questions on this or if you want to send me any of your mood boards for next week, that would be great. Um, and any questions from today, as I've said, it's much easier for me to reply after the effect because I'd have to stand like that and read the questions. Um, so I hope you really like them. I did have some questions from last week, if I can run through them. Uh, Wendy Kemp Forbes asked, can you revamp an old um, dark wood flooring without having to sand it and start again? Would polish do it? Sadly not, because when you put a treatment onto timber, it seals it in and you really would have to sand that back again. So there isn't a quick fix um, on that one. I'm sorry, Wendy. Uh, Deborah Wiley, John, I always miss your live feeds as I work on a Sunday. My question to you is if any inspiration for tired, worn wooden floors. Oh, another word for it. I think it might be cheaper to lay laminates than get the company to sand them back. What's your thoughts? Or rugs in the meantime. Yeah, well, I am a big fan of the rug, as you know. So you could do that meantime and there are great bargains out there. You can get some really nice rugs at really good prices. So that would give you a quick fix. But I think um, if it's a good wooden floor and it's solid, I would spend the money and have it sanded rather than put um, a laminate floor, which is a tiny slither of timber or plastic sometimes onto a, a, onto a soft wood. Um, so if it's a good floor, I'd sand. If it's going to be too expensive, get a rug just now. Um, the jury's out on the laminate, unless it's a very good laminate. And I'm glad that even though you're missing me live on a Sunday, that people can catch up and watching onto my um, YouTube. Hey, right, back again. Sorry, question came in there. Um, Carol Ellison, any tips for keeping a kitchen tidy, notes, vouchers to take shopping, shopping list? They're all in the island unit because there's no space for a notice board. Well, on the side of your fridge, you could get like a magnetic little notice board or get magnets on it or even, I don't really like them on the front of the fridge, but if you can access the side, then anything magnetic is a good idea. Or I have a little drawer underneath um, my oven. Um, and I keep things in like keys, notes, things. Obviously, it's not going to set anything on fire, but that's where I keep things. A designated drawer for things like that. Keep it tidy. Um, I have a pile of slates removed from our roof when we put VLUX windows in. Any suggestions what I can do to reuse them? Well, that's exactly what I did. Um, my home, um, as you know, has two pitch sides to it. It's a Swiss, Scottish, Swiss, co Swiss cottage style. And it's lots and lots of slate and what I did was with the, the slate that I took off I made a border and filled it with soil and I've created a little uh, rockery in my garden looks really good and the good thing is if anything happens with the slates you can just take from the rockery and put it back on the roof. Um, I have a set of black and white pictures um, 
off-white and silver grey pattern wallpaper, what frames would you suggest for the photos? I would keep it quite simple there. I would go for black um, because, I, again, I think it gives a bit like my client's living room with a little black arm on the chair, the little black leg on the sofa. And I think that would work perfectly well. Um, I hope that's been informative for you. I can't wait to read all of the um, questions. And uh, there's been loads of you pumping through because I can't see that side of the screen. And uh, on the 1st of June, we'll be giving away those three botanical cushions for anyone who has logged on and joined for our newsletter, which will be coming out next week. Claudia has done a great job in creating that. And um, I hope that's going to give you more information as well. So it's been great talking to you today. I'm actually going to do another little bit of work and then get back down to the back garden to top up more of my tan. So get your questions coming through. Catch up on YouTube. Um, make sure you subscribe if you've missed anything. And this will be going on to there this afternoon. So I'll be in touch through the week. Have a great Sunday and thanks for watching.